Welcome to online worship at Alders Gate. We are so glad that you've taken a little bit of time to join us today, especially if you're just connecting with us for the first time. Please feel free to, to leave a comment in this on the video here, because uh, we would love to connect with you. But before we do anything else today, let's just get started with some worship. So let's sing to our Lord together.
The Global Wellness Institute has discovered that the world spends $828 billion every year on fitness and well-being. The United States, perhaps not surprisingly, leads the charge by, send, by spending $265 billion every year on physical fitness and well-being. I mean, it might be true in your household as we think about the different items that we buy for our fitness. We buy sports equipment or gym memberships or mindfulness equipment or running shoes or kayaks. If I look at my own family, I have a Fitbit and I like to run, so I have a fairly expensive pair of running shoes. And sometimes when it's too cold outside, like it has has been recently I run in a treadmill in my basement. My husband has an Apple Watch and a CrossFit membership and most of what I got him for Christmas were workout clothes or workout accessories. Maybe you got a Peloton for Christmas or a Tonal Home Gym. Maybe you have started or restarted a gym membership. We spend a lot of money every single year on fitness and well-being. However, our money does not always match our behavior. Studies have found that actually only 58% of Americans are active. And although we lead the world in spending money on fitness, we are only 20th when it comes to actual participation in fitness. We fall far behind other countries like Australia, New Zealand, Taiwan, and Norway, where over 80% of their populations are active. And you and I know this to be true, that many of us live sedentary lives or obesity and chronic disease are on the rise just alongside the booming industry of the fitness market in the United States. And so perhaps maybe we don't actually value fitness and well-being as much as we may think. Today we are beginning a new sermon series titled Health Matters, where today and over the next couple of weeks, we're gonna talk about our health and how that matters to God and what the Bible says about health. And so today we're looking at physical health and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be looking at social health, mental health, and our spiritual health. And so today we are going to begin in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter six, uh, beginning in verse 12. So if you have your Bibles or a Bible app with you, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter six, beginning in verse 12 to see what does the Bible have to say about our physical health and well-being. Paul writes this in verse 12, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, for the but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Paul is writing this letter to the church in Corinth. And Corinth turns out to be a very influential and large city in ancient Greece. In fact, you can visit uh, Corinth today. It's about 50 miles west of Athens in Greece. And if you look at old maps, certain maps of Greece actually label Corinth as sin city. It had quite the reputation for being a very immoral place. And the whole city of Corinth had a motto that the citizens who lived there embraced. And their motto was, everything is permissible. They thought everything is permissible for them. It was a very laissez-faire environment, perhaps not too unsimilar to our environment today, where you do you and I do me, and as long as whatever you do doesn't infringe on my personal freedom, we're all good. And so that was very much the culture of Corinth, where they thought everything was permissible to them. And so Paul knew this motto of the city of Corinth, and so he references it as he begins this part of the letter by saying, all things are lawful for me, all things are permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Sure, you can do whatever you want, but it's not always beneficial to you or to the people around you. Paul repeats this again by saying, all things are lawful, but I will not be dominated by anything. Paul doesn't want to be dominated by any area in his life. And he gives two examples of things that sometimes dominate our lives. One is food and the, sex, and the second is sexual behavior. And so Paul is giving these as examples to warn the Corinthians and perhaps us today against the idea of overindulgence. Paul knows, as well as you and I know, that we can overdo it on anything. We can 
consume lots of extra calories, trying to fill this emotional void that we feel inside. We can seek after all sorts of different sexual behaviors, trying to get rid of the loneliness inside of us. We can scroll for hours mindlessly on technology, just trying to numb the pain that we don't really want to address that's bubbling up inside us. We can even overdo it when it comes to exercising and try to chase after some idealized self image. We can overdo it or overindulge on almost anything and it can dominate our lives and what Paul is saying is don't overdo it don't overindulge in fact you can almost hear echoes of Galatians 5 in this passage where Paul is talking about the fruit of the spirit saying that the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control is that Paul says that we as followers of Jesus are called to self-control not over indulgence. And if we have self-control rooted in the first fruit of the spirit, which is love, then yes, indeed, all things will be permissible for you. If you are rooted in love and have a sense of self-control, then all the decisions that you make will be good and in alignment with God's will. In fact, one famous theologian once said, love and do what you will. Because if love is your motive, if the root and the core of your desire and actions and decisions in the world, then you will make only good and life-giving decisions. Everything that's good and healthy and life-giving will be permissible to you. That all things are permissible if you are rooted in love. Paul continues uh, in this letter, picking up in verse 14. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Paul is reminding the Corinthians that God physically raised Jesus from the dead. God did not just raise Jesus' spirit or his soul. God raised Jesus' body. And we as Christians believe in the physical body resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, the early church had to wrestle with this idea because in the early church, there was a particular group of believers who did not actually believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus. This group became known as the Gnostics or the idea of Gnosticism. The word gnosis is the Greek word for knowledge. And so this group of people thought that Jesus came as a messenger to give them secret knowledge that would help them find their way back to God. And because they elevated knowledge so high over everything else, they actually thought that matter, all matter, is evil. So they thought that the body was evil. This led this group of people known as the Gnostics to not believe that Jesus actually was God in the human flesh. They did not believe in the idea of the incarnation. They did not believe that Jesus died a physical death, nor did they believe that Jesus was raised to a physical body resurrection. And so the early church was wrestling with this group of believers who had these ideas and the church came together and said, no, this is not the correct thinking or teaching of Jesus. Jesus came in human flesh. He died a physical death, was raised in a physical resurrection. That is the true truth that we hold to as the church. And so Paul is reminding the church in Corinthians that our bodies matter to God, that Jesus' body matter and our bodies matter. And to drive this point home even more, Paul writes this in verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own, for you were bought with a price? Therefore, is a temple of the Holy Spirit, that God's spirit takes up residence in you, that your body is sacred because of God's presence in you and it matters to God. In fact, your body, Paul writes, is not your own. It belongs to God. God has given it to you as a gift that we are part of Christ's body. And so that your body matters not just to God, but to the church together as we are connected through the body of Christ. And so Paul is saying here, the word that he uses for body doesn't just mean your physical body. You see, in Paul's mind, we don't just, ha we don't have bodies. 
We are bodies. The Greek word that Paul uses for body means so much more than just our physical body. It means your whole sense of self or your identity. So Paul believes that whenever you do something to harm your physical body, it doesn't just harm your physical body, it harms your identity, your sense of self, your personhood. So whenever you take one too many painkillers or one too many sips or one too many bowls of ice cream, that doesn't just harm your physical body, it harms your identity of who God has created you to be. That your body matters to God and that you are called to be a good steward of the body that God has given you. So if you don't hear anything else today, I want you to hear that, that your body matters and that we are all called to be good stewards of the bodies that God has given us. And so as we are entering into 2022 and we're thinking about our physical health and well-being, I challenge you this week to think about what is one way that you could be a good steward of your body in this week and into 2022. Maybe for you, it is to be more active, to set a step goal. I have a good friend at Aldersgate who has a step goal and she does whatever it takes to meet that goal every single day. Even if she has to do laps around her house, she will meet her step goal to be active. Maybe you want to do some strength training to help increase the strength of your body, especially, which is especially important the older that we get. Maybe you want to do a prayer walk where you lace up your shoes and you walk around your neighborhood and you not just work on your physical health, but you take care of your spiritual health as well as you pray for perhaps yourself or your family or even better yet, your neighbors around you as you walk through your community. Maybe you want to focus on eating better in this year. Maybe you want to get rid of all the extra chocolate or cookies or junk food and replace it with healthier foods. Or as Michael Pollan says in his book, The Omnivore Dilemma, that we should eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Maybe you want to focus on eating healthier this year. Or maybe you really want to just focus on rest. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is to take a nap. If you're tired, you're not at your best and you're not being a good steward of the body that God has given you. So sometimes maybe you need to focus on rest more in 2022. I don't know what it is for you, but I do challenge you to think about what's one thing that you could focus on this week and into 2022 to be a good steward of the body that God has given you because it matters to God. Our bodies matter to God. And when we're good stewards of the bodies God has given us, we're able to live into the ministry and mission that God calls us to in the world. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all the many gifts that you have given us. God, we thank you for the gifts of the physical bodies you've given us. God, we come in all different shapes and sizes. And God, we thank you for that. God, we praise you that the image of our body doesn't matter. What matters is that we're good stewards of what you've given us. So God, help us to be good stewards of our physical health in this year. God, help us to encourage each other as we seek to live into the calling that you've placed on our lives. So God, thank you that we matter to you. And God, I pray that you would continue to guide us each and every step of each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you if this is your first time tuning in with us. If you are new to Aldersgate, welcome. We would love to connect with you and we encourage you to visit our website, aldersgatechurch.net backslash I'm dash new. Also, we want to thank you for your generosity and your partnership with Aldersgate Church. If you are looking for ways to give to Aldersgate, you will see some ways on the screen to give. And we are excited to continue to partner with you into 2022 to see what God will do in and through us as a faith community this year. Speaking of that, as we are beginning a new year, I have really been realizing and felt called for us to focus on prayer as a faith community. It has been a very difficult and long season for all of us. And I feel convicted that we need to focus on prayer together as a church. 
And one of the things I want us to be praying for is our executive council. They are the spiritual leaders in many ways of our church here at Aldersgate, and they have to make some very hard decisions. And so right now I uh, want to thank three incredible people who have served on the executive council for three years. They serve in three-year terms, and their term has come to an end. And so I want to thank Carla Brenneman, Kelly Heisey, and Peter Train for their incredible service to the Executive Council. These past couple years have definitely not been easy, and so thank you for your service and your commitment and dedication and your wisdom as you've made, had to make some very difficult decisions and very faithful decisions, so thank you for your leadership. We also want to welcome our three new Executive Council members, and so we want to welcome Jackie Bender, Scott Coburn, and Leanne Rutt as our three new council members who will begin their three-year turn starting now in January of 2022. And so I wanna take a moment to pray over these new leaders and thank God for the leaders who have served in the past. And as we take a moment to do that, I also just wanna share with you a new prayer initiative that we are starting as a church this January in 2022. I'm calling this prayer initiative, hashtag 517. I'm calling it that because it comes out of 1 Thessalonians 517 which says to pray continuously, to pray without ceasing. And so I'm going to challenge all of us to set an alarm either at 517 in the morning if you're an early person or 517 p.m. at night to remind yourself to pray daily. And each month, I'm going to offer us a different prayer focus that we can have together as a church. So for the month of January, I'm asking us to pray this scripture passage out of Isaiah 45, verse 2. And this comes from the message version of scripture. It says, I'll go ahead of you, clearing and paving the road. As we are in this season of January, the beginning of a new year, I'm asking us to pray for God to continue to go ahead of us, to clear the path and to pave the road. There is still a lot that remains unknown to us as a congregation to see what God has for us in the future. And so I want us to be praying for God to continue to go ahead of us, to clear the path, to clear the road and to pave that for us as a church that we would trust in God to continue to lead us into this new year. So would you pray with me? God, we thank you for how you have faithfully gone before us in the past. And God, we ask that you would continue to go before us, that you would go ahead of us, that you would clear the path and pave the road for us as a congregation, that you would give us your vision, your wisdom, and that you would lead us faithfully into this new year. God, we pray that you would continue to provide for this church all that we need. God, we thank you for ways you've provided for us in the past by raising up incredible leaders like Carla Brenneman, Kelly Heisey, and Peter Train. And God, we thank you for their dedicated and faithful leadership. And we pray a continued blessing over their lives and their families. God, we pray for the new council members who will be joining this year and helping to lead the church into the future. So God, we pray for Jackie Bender. We pray for Scott Coburn. And we pray for Leanne Rudd, that you would grant them wisdom, guidance, your vision and direction as they help lead this church into the future. So God, for all the leaders and the staff and ministry teams and volunteers for each and every single person connected in and through Aldersgate. God, we pray for each and every single person that you would bless all of us in this new year, that you would guide and direct our steps and that you would draw us closer to you through your son, Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray.